Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Reign of Your Life podcast. Crystal here, and today I bring on my very own holistic nutritional therapy practitioner, Natalie Parlett, and we talk all about eating for energy. We talk about intermittent fasting and how she actually doesn't recommend it, the effects it can have on your adrenal glands, how when you're loading up on naked coffee, how that causes your blood sugar to be raised by the stress hormone cortisol and the long-term effects that can have on your adrenal glands. We talk about the after effects of intermittent fasting for years and how that can affect your body, your hormones, especially us as women. It is Our body is primed to be fed and the timing of our food and the quality of what we're putting in, as we all know, is really important. But this episode, we dive much deeper and I can't wait to take you on that journey. I first found Natalie because my girlfriend, Samantha, who you guys know, she styles my house and helps me put together this beautiful studio that I'm in now. Samantha is so amazing. And, you know, she came to me really concerned that I was just really crashing. I was so tired around four o'clock every day when our nanny would leave. I would just go and crash on the couch, put on TV, DoorDash food, and I could legit go to bed. And I was having so much guilt because I wasn't feeling present with Andara. I wasn't making these memories. And I was like, this isn't the mom I want to be. This isn't the life that I want to have. And I need to do something about it. So I'm so grateful for Sam for coming to me as a concerned friend and helping me and you know, introducing me to Natalie, who is someone she had worked with as well. And for the last six months, Natalie has helped me really in this postpartum season of remembering the timing of my food and what to eat and helping me identify through bioresonance scanning, which is a crazy technique she uses with her clients. And we talk all about it in this episode, so you'll definitely want to listen about halfway through and how we use that to determine what supplements was were resonating with my body. We talk about how my body was really craving antioxidants, lymphatic support, liver support, gallbladder drainage support, and how Natalie was able to help me really get my body to a strong baseline. She has a course called Eat for Energy out now, and she was so generous to offer a 20% discount to our listeners. You can use code RXL20 or use code CRYSTAL20, CRYSTAL with a K, and we will link that in the show notes below. If you are suffering from digestion issues, a lack of energy, are in the postpartum season, then this episode is for you. So send it to your mama friends, send it to your girlfriend, send it to anyone who is ready to feel more energized and vital in their life. And I can't wait for you guys to give this a listen. But before we dive into the episode, I just want to remind you that right now we have my once a year program, Fit for the Holidays, happening right now inside our exclusive RXL community. We are doing workouts, healthy holiday inspired meal plans, and I'm doing live coaching for the first time in two years. So those coaching calls happen Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. PST, and it's completely free for our RXL members. So if you're not yet a part of our community, please join us. We have some really fun stuff happening in the new year. So we're going out with a big bang for 2022, and we would love for you to be a part of it. So with that, let's dive into the episode. It's... <laughs> It's very valid because you don't really think about all these changes. And I know for me, when I had babies in my 20s, my body changed, but it went right back. And um, yeah, I don't know if my hips are going to shift back this time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think they're kind of yeah. maybe there. Uh, yeah, I think this is a permanent change and I'm afraid for a baby number two. I'm like, are we just going to continue to like widen here? <laughs> no, like, I don't think so. <laughs> And no. don't get me wrong, love my body, feel good in my body. My body is strong and I'm so grateful for it. It's just wild. Like to catch everyone up, we, Natalie and I were just talking about <laughs> bathing suit shopping. She's going to Nicaragua and we're bathing suit shopping and, and how we used to have all these like itty bitty tiny bikinis before having babies. And well, my, my case um, before having a baby and now they just don't fit. And so we, I just had this mass haul of getting rid of tons of cute bikinis but they're so <laughs> tiny and like my body just has does not fit in them anymore and it just blows my mind putting them on yeah it's actually really interesting um 
because it's not like you can weigh the same or you can weigh less, but like your, your body's like shifted. Um, but like, and I know that my hips have shifted and aren't quite back. I mean, that's one of the reasons why strength training post baby is so important so that you can, it's not about being smaller or bigger. It's like kind of like tightening everything up to support your structure Yeah, <laughs> or else you're not really yeah. supported. You're still like pretty loose because your body wants to just widen. <laughs> You know, that's one thing that the next time I'm pregnant, I'm definitely going to incorporate is strength training sooner because mm-hmm. I mostly just walked and wore Andara, like baby wearing and taking yeah. her walks out in Cardiff. And I loved that. And I'd wear like weighted vests or push her in a stroller. So I got a lot of kind of cardio in and we did yeah. hills because it's a very hilly area, but I really wasn't picking up the weights for a while. And that really surprised me because I was so, always a heavy strength trainer. post baby that's actually okay as things are coming back but you can do things like obviously you start with body weight and then you go into like banded stuff and then slowly shift into weights because you don't want to be doing a lot of like heavy weights um while you're too loose right like all those ligaments are super loose and it's really easy to injure yourself postpartum but like during pregnancy um I had like a like a path I followed essentially like I did like very specific things for like the first four to six months and then you taper and kind of do things that are more opening so that birth is easier (laughs) so you're not tightening 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 um, because that can then have the opposite effect if you're too tight when you go into labor you don't want that (laughs) yeah well and even like your pelvic floor you don't want a tight pelvic floor especially going into labor yeah, and that's not really talked about enough because <laughs> that right. can be really problematic. Um, it's something I talk to my midwife about a lot, and I've talked to other – I'm a Pilates instructor too, and so I've talked to other Pilates instructors, and it's like a really – I don't want to say really common. It's fairly common for women who are really into like Pilates and bar and heavy weightlifting to then have um, – a harder time giving birth because it's so tight. The pelvic floor is too tight. So I was really paranoid about that. I definitely saw a pelvic floor PT all the way through and made sure I was yeah. like doing everything so that I didn't make it harder because nobody wants to have hard to birth. Absolutely not. And, you know, there's symptoms of, you know, a loose pelvic floor. And we see yeah. that really commonly in postpartum. You know, yeah, the leaky definitely. bladder, the incontinence, the lack of running and the lack of jumping. I mm-hmm. dealt with that. And I, I was surprised. Um, I don't know why I was surprised. I just thought I would like bounce faster. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, motherhood really took me for a surprise. I mean, I gave birth at 33. So you know, I wasn't in my early 20s. Um, and my body like just, you know, I had to really give myself a lot of grace um, for that recovery process. And it really, I remember hearing like, It'll take about 18 months. And I'm like, no way, <laughs> not me. Like, I'm a fitness instructor. I'm Coach Crystal. Like, no. And um, and it did. It really yeah. did take me about 18 months. Yeah, it does. And I think we we do people a disservice by being like, oh, bounce back. Like, there's no such thing as bouncing back. It's like this, like, nice little, like, roller coaster that we're on. There's no bouncing. You just, like, gradually everything kind of tightens back up and doesn't always shift completely back like we were saying but um, yeah that's one thing that really bothers me about like the health and fitness industry is like trying to lose that weight right away and trying to bounce back when we know that that's not safe mentally or physically Um, but yeah no I think you did a good job I I actually really like how transparent you were postpartum with your body because that's a really hard thing when you've seen your body change so much to then yes. just be like this is my body this is what it looks like it looks not that different immediately after birth than it did prior to birth you know yeah you know I, I made a highlight on my Instagram and you know I was going back recently just a few days ago and watching my postpartum highlight where mm-hmm. I was you know working with my pelvic floor physiotherapist and I was like had all these videos of like exercises we were doing to engage my pelvic floor, to engage mm-hmm. my core, to really like get my body like just feeling good again, right? Yeah. And it was – I remember like 
just being there. And initially when I was posting it, I was like, wow, am I really going to post this? But on the other side, I was also like, it's also so amazing that I'm, my body is experiencing this. Like Mm -hmm. I have to document this because like, I know I'm going to come back to these highlights the next go around and to have this resource like available to me is really priceless. It is. And I honestly appreciate someone like you who has so many followers being so transparent with what your body did through pregnancy, postpartum, and then what the recovery is like and what it should be like slow. (laughs) So I congratulate you for that and I appreciate it. Thanks, girl. You know, I want to chat about – so for those who don't know, Natalie and I recorded this episode a couple weeks ago (laughs) and for some reason, like Miles was out of town at the day and Natalie came over and we're like, let's film on the pink couch. You're the first (laughs) guest on the pink couch. You were so excited. We got so cute and the freaking microphone didn't work. And so we didn't know until Natalie texted me like, hey, the audio is like pretty bad. I was like, are you for real? What? It was Um, a really good conversation too. It was so good. So I'm trying to like remember like some of the topics that we talked about because it was so good because I want to hit all of them and even more. But one, one thing we talked about, one, can you give everyone a little bit about your background and a little bit of how we've kind of come working together? Okay, so I am a nutritional therapy practitioner and a mama of five. (laughs) So I have a very wide range of experience. Um, I started this journey as a teen, actually. I had uh, twin boys when I was 15 and really just had no idea what I should be feeding myself, what I should be feeding them, and really learned about nutrition organically. Um, which is why I'm so passionate about it because I understand what it's like to, you know, not know anything and have some sort of an idea that the food I was eating was affecting me and my sons, um, but not sure exactly why. So I went on this like long journey (laughs) from 15 years old until my early twenties when I, you know, got into fitness training and Pilates and yoga and weight training and all that. Um, and then eventually uh, got into holistic nutrition as a nutritional therapy practitioner, uh, which brought me to where I'm at now. Um, and I had my boys, I had all my boys before the age of 24. So I definitely, wow. yeah, what you were saying about like body changing, it's definitely different in your 30s and your 20s. Um, I had my yeah. daughter at 36 and, uh, right, 36, gosh, I'm forgetting now. No, 37. I was 37. But um, yeah, like, so I've seen like (laughs) the shift in what my body does in my 20s versus my 30s. And honestly, like what it's like to be healthier now, knowing what I know now. Mm -hmm. Sure, my body isn't quite the same as it was then, but like mentally, I'm able to take care of myself better because I understand, you know, the postpartum journey and I understand the nutrition and how I should be moving my body. Um, as opposed to what I knew then, but it's, it's been a long journey. Uh, you and I met through our mutual friend, Samantha, who styled your beautiful studio there and your pink couch. (laughs) But yeah, you came to me postpartum, right? Because you were feeling pretty tired. I'll let you kind of go there. (laughs) Yeah, I was, I was just chatting with Sam and she's like, Hey girl, like something's wrong. Like if you're this tired all the time, you should really look, there's a deeper issue going on. And what was happening was I was, when our nanny would leave at four o'clock, I would go lay on the couch and I could go to bed. And I was having this overwhelming guilt because I was so tired to not be present with my daughter. I didn't want to play with her. I didn't even want to make her dinner, myself dinner, dinner for our family, have any of that quality time together. And it seemed that Miles really like took over. We were door dashing and we were getting takeout because I just didn't have the energy um, to really just sustain me in that second half of the day. And when we started working together, that was the biggest thing we really looked at was when we did a bioresonance scan, which I can't mm-hmm. wait for us to talk about here next, but we really focused on my blood sugar balance, what I was eating and the timing of my food. And just those few things alone, along with some nutritional supplements were a complete game changer for me. And 
now it's, I remember texting you and being like, oh my gosh, like it's, it's five o'clock and you know, I'm outside, I'm gardening with Andara, like we're planting flowers, yeah. we're watering, like I'm making these amazing memories with her when for months, like I could just sleep on the couch. I was so tired. Yeah. So that is honestly like why I do what I do because I know what that feels like. And I posted something on social media the other day, like, what does health mean to you? And like, to me, it means having the ability to show up in my life and being a mom and having the experience of having young kids and now teenagers and now a baby again. Like, I know what it feels like to feel like I can't show up for my family. And whether that's because you don't have the energy or you're struggling with, you know, anxiety, depression, whatever it is, like having the ability to show up is so important. And I, that is what I really learned through nutrition was that what I ate was impacting my energy levels. And what, when I work with women, especially moms, I'm noticing that most of them are eating in a way that doesn't support energy. Um, It doesn't support Mm -hmm. mental health. um, And it's really, really frustrating to feel like you can never get enough sleep. You can never Mm -hmm. fully be there, like be present, like you were saying. Um, So yeah, that really comes down to what and how often you're eating and how much um like it's a really common mom thing to just forget to eat or just to not eat enough and so that's I work with that I work with my clients a lot on that um and I know we we had to like really like (laughs) break you in on the like okay we're gonna wake up and eat (laughs) yeah we did okay so I can you walk us through kind of like a typical ideal schedule kind of some like hard fast rules that you would recommend for a client or like we can talk yeah. about the time, what we were doing with me because it was small little tweaks that made huge changes in my energy. Right. Okay. So the first thing I do, and I usually start people slow because people can't make a ton of changes like on day one. Um, so the first thing I always change is I want you to eat breakfast and I want it to be a protein rich breakfast within an hour of waking. And for many of us, that's a big shift because you know, whether we wake up before the baby or with the baby or the kids, it's like we wake up and we're go, go, go. We get coffee into our system and then maybe snack, but that's it. Um, so protein rich breakfast within an hour of waking. And honestly, nine times out of 10, I will get immediate feedback from people that they already feel better. Um, already. Yeah. So like a protein rich breakfast is more than just an egg. (laughs) It's like, I'm talking like at least three eggs for like the average sized woman. Uh, So you can do eggs, you can do fruit, you can do eggs on sourdough. You just really want to make sure that you're getting the protein and you're not waiting hours after you wake up. So what that's going to do is it's going to help bring your blood sugar up to a stable place. Um, And then as long as you eat like three or ish hours after, um, it's going to help maintain your blood sugar. So instead of going like this all day, you know, the sharp inclines and decreases, highs and lows. yeah, the highs and lows, yeah. which is your energy, like the blood sugar up and down is your energy. Um, you're going to eat. So it's more like gradual, like you'll feel yourself start to dip and then you eat again <laughs> and you just, you do that until you go to bed. Um, so that's the other piece is I really like to help women get in tune with how they're feeling, um, get in tune to what their body's telling them. And when I have people fill out what I call the food and mood journal, I actually care less about like the specifics of your food. And I care more about what the mood part is saying, your mood and energy tells me what your body needs. Um, so with time, once you start filling that out and like get used to looking at it, you you begin to see the correlation between, oh, I ate this for breakfast and I felt really good. I was in a good mood. I had energy or I didn't eat breakfast and I felt like garbage by three o'clock. You know, that's like a, mm-hmm. that's pretty standard actually. Um, and I have my eat for energy course and I have a checklist within that course where it's like, okay, you're going to fill out this. And then here's like your checklist at the end of the day. You're like, okay, did I, I felt like crap today. Like, did I hit all of these things? And that's, you know, protein, that's eating breakfast, that's water, that's 
uh, what I call naked coffee. Like you don't want to have just black coffee on an empty stomach. That is not going to feel great for your blood sugar and your energy later in the day. Okay. Let's talk more. I want to ask you about the naked coffee. And then I want to talk to you about intermittent fasting because what you're saying with breakfast is totally against intermittent fasting. And that for me, like I'd been a faster for years and, I did and too. <laughs> after we had kind of worked through and I understood more of blood sugar balance, I, I believe that's really why I was crashing. Yeah, absolutely. So I – Naked coffee. Naked coffee. Uh, you want to start there, intermittent fasting. Yeah. So the reason why I started drinking black coffee was because of intermittent fasting, right? You want to, That's the only thing you can have in the morning and it gets you going, it gets mm-hmm. you moving. But it can wreak havoc on your blood sugar levels later. And a lot of people that struggle with anxiety later in the day, um, panicking, shaking, that can be attributed back to coffee. And there's been studies actually that show if you wait to have your coffee and you have it with or after breakfast, um, it doesn't impact your blood sugar as badly as it does when you have it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. So I actually cut coffee out for a few years before I got pregnant with my daughter. Um, and I began to see my hormones improve um, and my energy improve. I was sad because I loved coffee. <laughs> but Who doesn't love coffee? Right. Um, but I notice all these things. And it's such a habit. It's a habit. It's a ritual. And like we like our rituals and it feels good and it's comforting. It was part of my morning routine. Um, yeah. But when I cut it out, I noticed my cycle improve, which like as women, we can kind of look to our cycle to see how things are going, right? Like you can't, our cycles don't lie. (laughs) If they're erratic, if you're having like horrible PMS, um, breakouts, whatever, like our cycles are telling us that there's something else going on. That's why you probably heard it called the fifth vital Mm -hmm. sign. Um, So when I cut out- I have not heard that. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a book called the fifth vital sign. Um, so when I cut out coffee, like everything improved, especially my cycle. Uh, but then after I had my daughter, it'd been a couple years of like, okay, I just want to bring it in here and there. And I started experimenting. I started delaying it to breakfast or after breakfast and it had zero impact on my period. It didn't make me feel anxious or shaky. Um, and I didn't crash later in the day. So, I started doing some digging and it turns out there's actual studies on it. So, yeah. Coffee yeah, I, black is we, not great. We swapped that out. Can you talk more about like what that looks like with your hormones, specifically with cortisol levels when we're fasting with just caffeine in our system? So with just caffeine. And how that affects your adrenals. So, so when you wake up in the morning and your blood sugar is, you know, like at its lowest, and you don't eat anything to bring it up, and you have coffee, you're essentially bringing in stress hormones to bring your blood sugar up for you, right? Because it has to be brought up for safety reasons. You can't just like wake up and stay bottomed out. So your body does a good job of bringing it up. Coffee adds more to the stress hormones. So that brings up your blood sugar for you. And so you're starting your day with stress hormones. Okay. And so that's like, Once you come up like that, eventually you have to come down. (laughs) And so that's why you see like the steeper, you know, highs and lows than you would if you would just have eaten. And as a woman, that's going to fatigue. It's not called adrenal fatigue anymore, but your adrenals are in charge of all of those things. And in the end, your adrenals are what get tapped out the most. Um, and so I have a chart actually, I actually will send it to you cause it's really cool. And it shows the bottom is cortisol and insulin. And then it's like DHEA and then, um, thyroid in the top is like estrogen, progesterone. So like, those are those hormones at the top that we need, but they're impacted by the bottom of the pyramid, which is insulin and cortisol. So insulin is going to be blood sugar. Cortisol is a stress hormone. So if we're fasting coffee, go, 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 fight or flight, we are just wrecking our hormones that we need to have a happy, healthy cycle. And as women, oh, that is, <laughs> yeah, so, so cool. I don't, intermittent, intermittent fasting is essentially like kind of like starvation mode in a sense. Our bodies want to be, 
ready to get pregnant. Whether or not you want to have a baby, and that's completely like your decision. You don't have to want to have a baby, but your body is going to perform best when it could have a baby, right? So when it's um, when your cycle is stable, your hormones are healthy and strong. But so when we're fasting, that that's telling our body like don't get pregnant. This woman's not eating enough. She's not eating regularly. And your body's basically being controlled by your stress hormones. So most of the thing, the most of the um, studies that have been done on intermittent fasting were not done on women. Um, Mm. And so it's not, it, I've never seen it work out really well for women. It'll work out well at first in that you will have all this energy, like nervous energy and you will probably lose some weight, but long term, you will crash and you will crash hard. Uh, I've seen like breakouts, low progesterone, all sorts of period issues, and then struggles with fertility is probably the most heartbreaking thing that you see after years of intermittent fasting. Wow. that I feel like, like just knowing that you just think about the anxiety in our culture and how common it is now to have anxiety. And I, I'm looking at the fasting, how common it is in our culture, having coffee all day, every day. It's just like part of our culture. And I feel like that's contributing so much to our, our anxiety levels. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, there's other things that impact our blood sugar, like poor sleep impacts it. I already said coffee. Um, and then skipping breakfast. So it's like all the things that we're taught are normal or that we should do impact our blood sugar, which impacts like our overall energy and anxiety (laughs) and our cycles. Wow. Okay. So that's intermittent fasting. Is it, I, I do like a 12, 12 window, which, you know, is a fasting window because I like that there's at least parameters. Like when I'm, I'm talking to giving advice and chatting with people and I'm like, we just need like kind of some parameters, like finishing dinner at an an early enough time to maybe get outside, go for a walk and have some of that food digested before you go down. Absolutely. Um, and so I don't, so when you look at it like 12, 12, like think about it this way, that means you're finishing dinner at let's say seven and then you don't eat until seven. And that's like, that's not a hazardous thing, right? Unless your body is telling you it is. And so that's why it's also important just to stay in tune to your body. I mean, that's essentially if you ate dinner at five or six and then you ate breakfast at five or six, like that's a pretty like normal thing. Um, Yeah. So that's healthy. I don't, intermittent fasting, I would say you're waking up and you're going two, three, four hours or more. You know, there's people that fast for 20 hours or 22 hours. <laughs> and yeah. Like I said, it feels really good at first, but about? not in the long run. Yeah. So you're saying it just really matters the morning. You can kind of like scoot your dinner a little earlier, but the morning, like getting your blood sugar up naturally with protein, yes. like clean and protein. It, so what it is the most yeah important. and what it does is it sets the tone for the rest of the day um, when you wake up and you're feeding yourself good nourishing food you're not going to be scrambling for something that's going to be a quick fix that's not going to be as nourishing and satiating later in the day because um, think about crashing whether it's like two to four o'clock like you're not going to want to reach for a protein rich meal. You're going to want to reach for something. Your brain's like, give me sugar, give me carbohydrates. You have me running on nothing. So it's usually like a quick fix that barely gets you to dinner time. So when you start your day, don't they say that, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. When you start your day with protein and a really good breakfast, you're more likely to make it to lunch and want to make better choices at lunchtime as well. And then dinner. (laughs) Yeah, that's so true. Isn't don't they say the salt cravings? Are you familiar with cravings and what your body is somewhat? Like the yeah, somewhat. Are? I believe they say salt cravings are your adrenals. Yes. It's like a sign of yes. your adrenals needing support. Um, that's why the adrenal cocktail. Have you ever had one of those? I think I sent you a recipe for mm-hmm. one. Um, adrenal cocktails have salt in it, so it's basically like mm. a cocktail that's nourishing for your adrenals. I actually like adrenal cocktails. Ooh, I'm going to yeah. make that. I'm going to make that. 
Okay, I want to go back to the to your hard and fast like tips. So you're saying protein rich, protein rich breakfast meal within third within an mm-hmm. hour. What if someone wakes up and goes like straight to the gym? It depends what they're doing, honestly. Um, I if you're waking up at five and you're heading to the gym at five thirty, I would still like a little something in you, even if it's really small, and then you can have that big yummy breakfast after. Um, but like a little bit of like aminos, like a little shake, like something small just to get you through. Even if it's like you make, even if you have like a little bit of your shake beforehand, um, it's going to be better for you in the long run. Okay. And especially if you're weight training, you definitely want food in your tummy. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed huge results. Like when I, (laughs) when I went on Bachelor (laughs) in Paradise, I had a month to prep before I knew I was going. And I was like, I'm going to have the biggest, firmest ass on that island. And I went into an aggressive, like 30 day booty pump up challenge. I got to say, I need to like go back and recreate that because you know, there, I had great results, but it was all about nutrition. So timing. what did you I do? Did like two to two, I did two to three days of 5 a.m. hit okay. workouts with strength. I did them fasted and I'd come home and I'd have my protein and then I would have a big carby meal within 90 minutes. And then two days a week, I went to the gym and specifically trained just glutes, but I went in the afternoon mm-hmm. after I'd had one to two meals. So I was really full. I could lift really heavy and really push it. And I had cr- – like I was so <laughs> – like thick in tone. <laughs> oh, good. I, that's funny. I could oh, always good. lift more in the evening sessions when I used to lift consistently. It was like evening. I could yeah. hit PRs. Okay. So did you have to basically live in your bathing suit on the show? Pretty much, <laughs> which is why I made such an yeah. aggressive like. <laughs> I, I would have too. <laughs> <laughs> Totally. You're going to be on national television with like 80 cameras and you're going to be in a fucking yeah. bathing suit the entire That's time. That's a lot. Like, yeah, I'll be in the gym for the next month. Uh, see you I, soon. I'm going to Nicaragua <laughs> tomorrow. I should have started this um, I should have started this 30 days ago. <laughs> but you look great. You look – yeah, yeah. You look amazing. <laughs> and you know how the to angle. angle. I don't know how to angle. Pop. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I will show you. I would show you now, but I'm in a dress with leggings because I didn't think anyone would see my bottom half. <laughs> okay, so after the show, to me. Uh, I will send you pictures. That's so funny. Okay, so what I want to go back to what you said. I made those changes. I cut out coffee first thing in the morning, and for me, I was like. Whenever I would envision my 2.0 self, my highest self, I'm like she like wakes up and she drinks matcha. <laughs> I remember you telling every- me that freaking day. Yes. We've talked about it. I go every freaking day I would pour that coffee and I was feeling this mm-hmm. guilt. And I told you about it. I'm like, I just, my body doesn't want this, but it's such a yeah. habit for me. Like I don't know how to, how to shake it. And so we found a healthy replacement and we put my, put me on mm-hmm. Shi, which is like the black gold resin. And I have that. It's like this tar that you melt in hot water. I add, I did it with peppermint tea and some lemon and some salt in there. And been drinking that and it is so satiating it completely fills that need for coffee i love that i use that every morning it is in i just ordered more because i did their black friday sale and i was like i'm stocking up and um someday this podcast hopefully will be sponsored (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that. but um that is and i actually first got on that because my holistic uh ayurvedic doctor slash chiropractor dr yoder when i had that chemical exposure and that bleach mm-hmm. in my eyes he recommended i get on the sheila g because it's for mitochondrial cellular yeah. support like feeding your mitochondrial cells energy and i immediately have noticed a difference so i'll drink that before i go and work mm-hmm. out in the morning and I feel like it. It's like it's about seventy percent there the, of that energy that I would get from yeah. a cup of coffee. Um, it's like I get from the kind of a big energy. deal, honestly. Anytime you're supporting, I love that product. And I use it every day. But anytime you're supporting your mitochondria, um, you're gonna feel a difference, and you're gonna feel like that turned on feeling, which is essentially what people want from their coffee, right? We want to turn our brains on. Um, yeah. But that was one of the things that came up on your bioresonance was mitochondrial support. Um, And I forgot about that chemical exposure you had, but I've been seeing that more and more with people like post viruses, like anything. Um, You also need a lot of antioxidant support. So 
I feel like supporting that plus your blood sugar, like you came back to life, which is amazing. So fast. I think within like three yeah. days, I was already feeling better. But like within a week, week and a half, I was feeling like a full yeah. 180. That's like what I like to hear. Full 180 flip. Yeah. And one more tip that I don't know if this is part of like your, you know, staple – things. But one thing that you had me do that made such an improvement was I was skipping <laughs> yes. lunch. I guess I was just forgetting to eat lunch. Mm-hmm. And like, never have I ever before becoming a mom that would I ever right. forget to eat. <laughs> I love to eat. And, and I used to eat all the time and be really on yeah. with my timing and make my own food and make them healthy with lots of fresh stuff. And then I'll tell you, like becoming a mom, it just flew through me for such a loop. Like, you know, we shop at Trader Joe's now, which I used to shop at Whole Foods Lazy Acres. And mm-hmm. there's a difference, you know, in produce and and things you can right. buy there, right? Um, and just getting a lot of processed foods and snacks and chips and hummus. And those are the and things like, that you okay, reach for when your blood this. sugar crashes. So that's what's like eat lunch Ab- so that you don't <laughs> reach for the snacks. <laughs> Yeah. And like, I love Trader Joe's and they make really good stuff. But when that's like, I'm consistently eating that French right. onion dip with like their chips, like that's processed in, yeah. in my gut every single day. And like that, that adds up. So we, um, added in, we needed to make sure I was hitting lunch, which actually took a while for me to really like get that back into my routine. And it was like prepping mm-hmm. it the night before is what I needed to do. But you had me start eating appetizers around two thirty three yeah. o'clock. And so that I would, because that's when I would start yeah. crashing. So I started eating little cans of <laughs> oysters and olive oil. And so I'd have that little protein, a little mm-hmm. sriracha, and that just carried me through all the way to dinner. And I, I mean, so wow. that little appetizer is like stuff. a preventative crash snack. So if I notice I have a client yeah. that's like crashing around the same time every single day, one lunch is usually a culprit. And then two, like, okay, what can we do to keep you from going there? And it's, like I said, part of just getting to know yourself and your body and how it feels and what it needs. Um, But it's, like, such a small thing that makes the biggest difference. It's going to improve your energy and your mood for the rest of the day. And you're able to, like, I hate to say push Mm -hmm. through. But, yeah, essentially sometimes as a mom we have to push through. But this helps you get through like that rough patch because we all know that the morning or not the morning hour the dinner hour like three to five is like the witching hour with babies and toddlers so it's like we gotta get to dinner yeah that appetizer totally. gets you there. and you it got me there and you know it was I'm just remembering too like I was always craving wine <laughs> at like five o'clock and it, it was like it was specifically wine. It wasn't like I wanted a buzz or I wanted to relax. It was like I wanted wine. And what came up in my bioresonance scan, which I want to ask you about next, was that I needed antioxidants, antioxidant yeah. support. So it's so funny how our bodies are communicating with us, like what it really needs and how we can better support yeah, us. Yeah, so that was actually really cool to see. You're right, the wine. Um but the antioxidant yeah. support, because you also said, like, my highest self it drinks, like, matcha every day. So, like, green tea came up, which is antioxidants. Like, it was just, like, boom, 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 like, all these things. I'm like, I know what you need. <laughs> I know. Wasn't yeah. so Yeah, so the cool? bioresonance is really cool. Um, it basically tells me exactly what a person needs in that moment um, and where to start. So, with you, it was like, okay, we need to do some lymphatic drainage, right? We needed to balance out your blood sugar. So we're going to work on the meal timing. We're going to up your protein, um, antioxidants, mitochondrial support, the she um, mm-hmm. I can't remember what else came up for that first one, but it was like a pretty night and day. Gallbladder, gallbladder. drainage too. It was a yeah. lot of drainage. My body really needed and drainage. And honestly, like that is – pretty common for your first time if we haven't done any um, drainage, any like herbal or homeopathic drainage that comes up a lot. And it's almost like it's clearing the pathway to work on other stuff. And a lot of times, once we just support the body in drainage, um, antioxidants, like those like basic things that it's asking for, everything else kind of falls into line and we don't have to do anything crazy. We don't have to do a crazy heavy detox or whatever because 
on the testing, like you can see things like heavy metals and mold and lime and all these like kind of scary things. But a lot of times, once we get all the other stuff out of the way, those things resolve themselves. So we don't have to do a crazy, scary, heavy detox, um, which was the case with you. Like every time we've scanned you since that first time, you've improved, which is really cool to see. And I just feel yeah. so much better. What I really like that you did too is like when we did the initial scan, you put it kind mm -hmm. of into like layers. You're like, these are the most immediate things we need to take care of. And then once this is, once we address this, then we'll yeah. move, we'll move yeah. on to, to what, you know, if, if we need next. And what I've liked about the bioresonance scanning, one thing that is so cool about this machine you use, and I want to <laughs> ask you like why you love it here in a second, but it's like you can put we were, we've been putting all my supplements on it so we've been seeing if like my supplements are resonating with me can you tell us a little bit what is what is that ex exactly our cells communicate through electrical signaling and the machine picks up on that so the machine picks up on what our cells are saying and what we need right because we're made up of cells like every organ in our body is made up of cells mm -hmm. we are essentially cells <laughs> um so the machine picks up on everything yeah. and it gives us back the information that resonates. So without testing your current supplements, it just tells you like what supplements your body is asking for right now for its immediate support. Um, and then we can take it a step further and we can like test what you actually have on hand to see if it's resonating with your body right now, which is cool because sometimes it's a definite yes and sometimes it's a definite no. Like your body doesn't need this. Like, okay, let's put this on pause and take something later. And I think people tend to imagine their bodies as machines. And for a long time, like I kind of would think of my body as a machine too. It's like you feed the machine, you oil the machine, you give the machine what it needs. Um, but we're not machines. Like we're always changing and our bodies really respond to the energy around us, what we're putting in it. Um, and our bodies have the ability to naturally heal if we if we give it what it needs right um so for someone not you but like anyone to just take the same supplements every day no matter what it's like why why because your body may not need that so let's see what your body actually needs in this moment and then when it's done needing that supplement we can move on we can stop it for a while and see how you do without it yeah. What I thought was so cool, like, cause yes. we did it with my mom. Like my mom had recently been diagnosed with breast cancer. Like I had her come down to San Diego and we did a, a resonance scan with her and it was, I mean, oh my God. Cause this scan, you guys will even pull up like affirmations, like your energy centers. Like it's so the emotional body is like pretty intense. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, whoa. It was so spot on for my mom. So spot on for me. I was like, damn, this machine yeah. like knows all of <laughs> my, me <laughs> more I than know, I know my myself. I hate it when I do it on them because they're like, it's like I can like know what they're thinking. <laughs> See everything. Totally. And what was so cool is like when we're scanning the supplements, it, it tells you exactly mm -hmm. how much you need. So it was so cool. I remember like seeing that with my mom because she, you know, is g going through her breast cancer journey all holistically, like on her own. And so she's like, has all, you know, all loaded up with the supplements and the juicing and she brought it all. And it was just really cool. It was really validating. Yeah. I felt for my mom that felt really empowering where she was like, okay, like, yes you know, it's resonating, yeah. resonating, resonating. Yeah. Resonating. Cause you don't want to take something blindly that's not working because that's also, that can be more of a burden on the body than not. Right. So if you're taking something you don't need, like your body still has to process mm -hmm. it, you know, and what is it going to do with it? With your mom, that was really cool. And like the emotional piece or not, I don't need to get into the emotional piece, but like for you and your mom, it was just, I almost sometimes enjoy that more than any other part because we can do all the things we can eat perfectly. We, we can take the perfect supplements, like whatever we need, we can do, we can work out all that. But if we haven't addressed like what's happening in here and in here, then none of that matters. Like it's, it wasn't until I actually started using this technology that I realized that our minds are probably the most important part. 
and it really controls everything. Yeah. And my husband told me for years, for oh, years, yes. he was like, I think it's stress. I think it's stress. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, it's not stress. Like, I, I fought it so hard. And then to see, like, literally stomach issues, um, anger come up, like, underneath the same, like, category. It's like, oh, okay. Like, I get it. I see how it works. I see how energy works now. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. It's so true. And so amazing. You know, like I've been going through like a hard time with my mom's cancer and diagnosis and a lot of like just shifts and seasons changing in, in my life. And, you know, both Miles and I with our companies, like so much is up in the air. And it's like, I have found that, you know, I wasn't showing up in the gym. I wasn't showing up for my workouts and I was finding myself not putting myself out there, not pushing myself in mm. any aspect of my life. And Miles and I talked about it and I was like, I need to get in the gym. I need to physically yeah. move my body because I know I'm building that mental resiliency. I'm building a strong mind and building a strong body. And when I feel confident and capable and that I accomplished a goal I said I was going to do right. when I worked mm -hmm. out that morning, right? I then show up so much bigger in other yeah, areas. Yeah, completely. And it's also about, you know, moving that energy yeah. out of your body too. If you've done any reading, yes. like um, the body keeps the score, like you have to move your body. To I have it. You I like have that it one. downloaded. Yeah, I that's a good need one. to read it. Yeah. Oh man, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> my <laughs> sign. <laughs> but what, what was the book saying about your body? Just that you have, you have to, to like, move, move it through. through and it, it, I, it was years ago that I read it, but they use the, or the author used the comparison between animals and humans. And when an animal experiences like intense stress or trauma, it will do something physical. So sometimes it'll start shaking or, you know, like sprint as hard as it can. And it's getting the trauma and that energy out and, we need to do the same thing. Like we have to get it out because otherwise it stays in the body. And I'm sure you've experienced um, instances where something's happened to you or you've had a thought pass through your head and then you have like a physical response, whether it's in your stomach or your chest or your throat, um, you feel that in your body. So I'm, I'm a big believer in like movement, getting oh, it out, yes. therapy, big believer in therapy, <laughs> all those things. Yeah. And it's so important too, just for the lymphatic system of your body. Like we don't have a manual pump for our lymphatic system. Like we, we don't have a pump. We have to manually pump it through exercise, jumping, dry brushing, cold plunging, like all that's so important to just get everything circulating. Yeah. And, well, and we and live out. a fairly sedentary lifestyle compared to how we were designed to be, you know, we're, we're humans and we're supposed to be moving and now we live in a world where we're not moving we're sitting so we're blocking a lot of that like drainage and we're not moving the amount that we should be to keep everything flowing um, so that's one of the things that almost always like I said comes up on the scan is lymphatic drainage and movement and you know there's a lot of things that we can do to get that moving that's not my specialty but it's very very important and so I usually have like a okay this is how we get our lymphatic um, system moving and working in. But there are people that are experts that you should have on because it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. It's, it's so cool. Um, can you, are there any other like tips that you have for our listeners on how they can start, you know, feeling really empowered and feeling good with their bodies and feeling really confident? Like, do you have like one big takeaway that, one tip they can apply in the next 24 hours to start feeling just good and in their skin. Again. I mean, wake up and have breakfast, <laughs> have breakfast tomorrow, have protein rich breakfast yeah. within an hour of waking up, get outside and move your body. Even if it's for a walk, a 20 minute walk, get out in the sunshine or not sunshine. It actually, people usually think it needs to be sunny out, but it doesn't. Like even a cloud cover, you get outside and you see the natural light is going to help you mentally feel better um, than just being inside under unnatural lights. Um, movement and food, honestly, that has been like what has kept me um, healthy and happy and grounded throughout my life and like I said, like I had twins at 15, so I, my life hasn't necessarily been easy. Um, but movement 
and food is what has gotten me where I am right now. Oh my gosh. And can you tell us, I know yes. you have your new Eat course, for energy. Eating for Energy, and I think you have a special discount. I do. It's listeners. a 20%, I think, off discount for Crystal's listeners. Um, yeah. That's so generous. Thank I you, Natalie. I think I you, it was RX, like I said, I did this when we first recorded, <laughs> RXL20. Oh. Or Crystal 20, whichever one you can yeah, remember. Or Excel 20 or Crystal 20 uh, for E for Energy. And my course is a self-paced course. And it teaches you um, how to optimize your blood sugar, your digestion, your mental state, um, all the foundations of nutrition and movement to help you feel your best. So if you really want to dive deeper into um, – feeling empowered in your body and like knowing how to eat and what to eat and what works for you specifically, I highly recommend eat for energy. Oh my gosh. And I highly recommend anyone who's inter- listening and interested in working with Natalie. She's outstanding. I've been working, we've been working together for the last yeah. almost six months and just having the energy to be present with my family and and just really show up more for myself has been an absolute game changer. And I highly recommend it. If there's people who are not local in San Diego, do you yes, work for with sure? I do state? actually a lot of my work I do with people is remote. So, um, just reach out and okay. I actually have a link on my, in my Instagram profile of how you can work with me. And, um, I have a website, Natalie and my Instagram is just Natalie Parlet too. Amazing. And I will be sure to link everything in the show notes below so you guys can just click it and make sure to use that discount code RXL20 or Crystal20, (laughs) Crystal with a K, to get 20% off the Eat for Energy course. I went through it in like real real life experience and it – in real time and it was amazing. And so if you are looking for more energy and looking to feel confident with your nutrition, definitely check out Natalie. Thank you. Natalie, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. great to see you. Such an honor having you here. I know. I I can't wait to play date soon. (laughs) And thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening and we'll catch you next week on the next episode.